name is Dennis Walker, and I have the distinct honor and pleasure of being with Pastor Asa Roberts of Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church here in New Kensington. And Pastor Roberts joins me here today to enter into a question and answer period about the historic church, Mount Calvary that is, and its congregation. Pastor Roberts, I want to thank you so very much for spending the time with us on this 30th day of August, 2008. Good to be with you. Yes, Pastor, and I guess the best thing for us to do is to, to start at the very beginning. And uh, that takes us back to a time when you were a youngster back in the South. My question is, where were you born, Pastor? Kirkland, Georgia. Kirkland, Georgia. Kirkland, Georgia, yeah. Okay. All right, and give us a little... With the date? I'll be fine. April 6, 1918. 1918. Yes, sir. Okay, very good, very good. Um, tell us a little, a little bit, if you will, about your parents and um, who they were and what they might have done and your other brothers and sisters. Let's see. <laughs> my uh, parents, on my first on my father's side, uh, from uh, slave sharecroppers down in... The, in Kirkland, Georgia, mm -hmm. he was a great, he was a, a great a grandson of a sharecropper down in Kirkland. Okay. And uh, after they were freed, then they gave him some ground to work. In fact, it's down there now. We still have some Is that right? Okay. Yeah, we still uh -huh. got it. We pay a little taxes on it. Okay. Great. <laughs> but they grow, they, they don't grow crops on it now. They grow pup wood. That's one of the big, uh, big uh, money making me down in Georgia now. In that area is for wood, mm -hmm. to make paper out of pup wood. So uh, later on, my father got married at 21, and my mother was 15, and she's part of Indian, Cherokee Indian. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when uh, she got married, I was born when she was 16. Is that right? Yeah, she was born 16. Okay. So okay. Okay. I was born in a little log cabin. As a matter of fact, the log cabin is still down there. Part of it, and I take my grandchildren and my great grandson down there to check it out to see what it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's still part of it. But it's all grown up around. That's, that's very interesting, yeah. interesting yeah. history. Yeah. Now, life in the, was that a rural part of the South? Yes, definitely rural okay. part. Yes. Were there types of jobs available to the family at that time? Other than <laughs> Only working in the fields. Fields, I see. Okay. And we could cut what we called it, cutting cross ties or dipping turpentine. You don't know nothing about that, but uh, in those days, they dipped turpentine. Is that right? Okay. Oh, yeah, I used to bring cups to my dad. Uh huh? Okay. Yeah, working those pup wood. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, you, you were uh, married, oh, in the mid-19, uh, around 1945. Um, give us an idea of who you married and the type of person she may have been, and I believe you might have had a family about that time. Well, uh, after I came out of service, I served uh, <coughs> in the Army <coughs> for seven years mm -hmm. and three and a half years overseas in Europe. And I was going with this. Who, is, who, was, who I later got married to, to uh, Gertha Taylor. Now, we left the farm, my father left the farm back in the early 30s, because he said, I'm not farming anymore. He could never get out of debt. And we moved to a little place called Douglas, Georgia. Douglas, Georgia. Yeah, that's okay. not far from Wade Cross. And he had uh, four churches. As a matter of fact, he was a preacher this time, and he had five churches. And he still couldn't take care of us. Back during the WPA days, that's what my father started in. And they would let him get on the WPA to get food because he was a minister. Mm -hmm. And we came to Douglas, and uh, after we left Douglas for a while, we went to Waycross, where he got a church in Waycross, the Pilgrim Baptist Church, and we moved to Waycross in uh, 30, 34. And he practiced, uh, pastored in Waycross and in uh, Brumdick, Georgia. I met this little girl uh, in Waycross called Egertha Taylor. Okay. She was the baby of a family, spoiled as a brat. Okay. She's gone on to glory now, but uh, she was spoiled, couldn't even wash the dishes. Okay. She couldn't cook because now, I was the oldest in my family, I learned how to cook. We got, we got married, she couldn't gel jello. But okay. uh, we hung it, we made it together for okay. many, many years. Okay. But anyway, that's how I married my wife. Okay. Yeah. So, so you started your family? Started the family. In the South? Well, no, we didn't start. When I came out of service, my father had moved to Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. That's, oh, okay. why I'm, that's why I'm in Pennsylvania now. Mm -hmm. And when I came out of service, he lived in Aliquippa. I went back to Georgia Camp Stewart and got uh, discharged and came back to, uh, to Aliquippa from Atlanta, uh, out from Atlanta where I got discharged at. And I stayed with my parents for about three months. But I was in combat 
and I was in combat mm -hmm. for, I had the Silver, uh, Silver Star and two Braun. And when the planes would go over going to, Air, to Pittsburgh Airport, I would jump up and scream, fall out, fall out. I was the master first sergeant okay. in the Army. And my father won't give his son, what's, what's the matter? I said, it's nothing, I'm okay. So he took me down to be examined down to the veteran hospital. And they told me, he says, if the boy stayed in the outfit, stayed in the service, another month he would went nuts. We used in combat for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to leave out of the because I couldn't stand the planes because they flew over at night. And we, all the bedrooms was upstairs in the parcel, and I would run and fall out, fall out. And my father would go, boy, what's the matter? So they told me, he says, he can't stay here. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to Philly, and I stayed in Philly for a while. I was looking for, you know, playing around. But at that time, Egerta was living in Detroit, and she was a nurse, and she was working. And so I went over to visit with her, and, uh, and uh, we decided to get married. Wonderful. So we got married. Okay. In okay. 1945. So you were a decorated veteran? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I, I got all that kind of stuff. Fantastic. Sometimes Fantastic. I don't like to talk about it. I lived in here. I understand, for a while. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, now, I could tell you about Andrew Beach here. I could tell you a lot about it. I oh. bet, sure. Yeah. Pastor, that brings up a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when did you receive y your calling? Because I'm assuming that it was either during or after your uh, military service, but did that have any kind yeah, of impact yeah. your calling? I received my calling your... before. Oh, you did? Uh, okay. When I finished high school, my father had the, had the, the name slipped to my head at the Moore's College. That was the one that was owned by the, uh, by the black uh, Baptist down in Atlanta. You've mm -hmm. heard about Moore's and Morris oh, Brown. Certainly. Anyway, yes. he came and he spoke to us at the high school, and my dad and uh, the president of the college, his name slipped him right now, believe out to the gate talking. He said, we get AC to come up to Atlanta and go to Moorhouse, so I'll give him a scholarship. Mm -hmm. I said, I ain't gonna be no preacher, and, I'm not, and I thought at that time, everybody went to Moorhouse had to be a preacher. And my dad, and I was uh, 20 years old, my dad, boy, boy, he called me a boy. I was taller than him. Okay. He said, boy, shut up your mouth, you don't know what you'll be. And I told him, I was down there this summer, and I showed my uh, great grandson, and my, my grandson, what it was. So I went to hide the house, and we had a pecan tree there. And I stood up on the peak country and I was kicking the sand on the, my feet and messing around. And a voice spoke to me then, yeah, but you're going to preach. And they were about 50 yards away from me. And I looked around at the gate. I said, who said that? Mm -hmm. And nothing happened. I just went, on, went around the back and sit on the steps. And I said, shoot. I got on my bicycle and went down to Cozen, down on State Street. I, I got away from it. I went down to Cozen. And I never heard that voice until in Detroit. When I had bought a home on MacDougall Street, 1762 MacDougall Street, I was painting my house. I was uh, trying to work, and I got back in the church, and I was painting my house, and I said, Lord, what do you want? He said, you are going to preach. I was youth director. I was doing everything. And I tell all people, now, you can do everything you want, but when God wants you, he catch you. And he, he stands still. He runs you down standing still. Yes. That's why I went to the big city. I was trying to get away from all that. I got the place where I wouldn't even have to go to church. My wife said, yeah, but I'm going to call and tell your dad. Uh, tell your father, you won't go to church. You won't do this or that. And you was raised that way, and you, you get away from it. So uh, I said, I'll go back to church, but leave me alone. I don't, but I knew something was on me, but I didn't know. And at that time, I heard the voice. I said, well, Lord, what do you want? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a junior deacon. I'm a youth of the youth department, and everything is doing fine. And I tell all of you, you can be successful in this life, and yet not doing what God wants you to do. Okay. See, God has special work for all of us, and he'll get you sooner or later. He'll, he'll, he'll get you. And God has time, but we the one don't have time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard uh, God say, yeah, but I want you to preach. That's what you to do. At that time, my pastor, at that time, uh, Roosevelt, we didn't live on the street over from me. And he was driving, hey, Brother Robert, how you doing? Everybody in Detroit called me Brother Robert. Nobody called me by pastor or reverend. Everybody in Detroit called me. But anyway, to make a long story short, and I could talk all day. You don't want me to no, do no, that. No, that's, that's fine. And get off of there. That's and get. But anyway, I went and told him, I says, uh, uh, he pulled over. I said, Pastor William, you know that uh, uh, God just taught me again. He called me to preach. And he felt like he pulled over. He said, wait a minute, let me park. He pulled over. He said, boy, you was going to go crazy. Mm. Your father knew and I knew that God called you to preach. A lot of people see that you, but you didn't want to preach. I said, no, I don't want to preach. We like to start with death when I was growing up. I don't want to be no preacher. Preacher don't make no money. I said, I'm working for the government. I'm, I'm doing good. I got a good job. I can't never get laid off. I'm working for the government. They can mess with me. I'm a veteran. I could take yeah. a story about that, but I don't want to take that. <laughs> but anyway, I said, I got a lifetime job. And I, he says, and you got, he says, son, we, we didn't want to say nothing to you, but we saw it. And it can be revealed when God has a special place for you, what he wants you to do. Certainly.